everyone. Today we're going to take an in-depth look at the Home Health Star Ratings with Liz Silva from Home Health and Hospice Data Analytics. My name is Kristen Bright and I will be your host today. Before we begin, I'd like to go over just a few things. You've joined today's webinar listening through your computer speaker system by default. This means if you can hear music through your computer, you will be able to hear the presentation. If you would like to call in using the phone, just locate your audio pane and select Use Telephone. The dial-in information and access code will then be displayed. You have the ability to ask questions using your questions pane. Simply type your questions in and click Send. At the end of the presentation, we will do a Q&A session and we'll take as many questions as we have time for. The handout for this webinar was available in your reminder email. If you did not have an opportunity to download the handout prior to the webinar, just locate your handouts pane and select the file for download. You can then click the download file to open or save it. This presentation is being recorded and will be available on demand for all attendees following the webinar. You will receive an email in the upcoming days with the recording link. I will now hand it over to Liz. Thank you, Kristen, and thank you everyone for joining us today. As Kristen mentioned, we are going to be talking about the Home Health Star Ratings today, and our focus is really going to be on the Quality of Patient Care Star Rating, but we'll touch a little bit also on the Patient Survey Star Rating. We'll also discuss why star ratings in particular, as opposed to some other mechanism of conveying this information, talk about the selected measures that are included in the star ratings, and how home health agencies are um, identified as being eligible or the criteria to, um, for each home health agency to get a star rating. We'll touch on the methodology that's used to um, calculate and come up with the star ratings and also talk about the timing and availability of the star ratings on Home Health Compare. At the end, we're going to also just uh, give a quick overview of the provider preview report that home health agencies will receive before any of the STAR ratings become official and are posted publicly on Home Health Compare. So we'll start off by talking about why STARS in particular, why STAR ratings. And the, the, one of the main reasons is this is something that's easy for consumers to understand. It's um, something that has been used in the general public and makes it very easy to just look at and absorb what that rating may mean. It also is consistent with how CMS is planning on uh, conveying this type of information across all areas of healthcare. Um, they have plans to adopt the star rating um, across all of the different compare websites. It's already in place for the nursing home compare website and physician compare, and this year in 2015 they have plans to implement um, the star ratings for dialysis dialysis facility compare, hospital compare, and home health compare. In the future, obviously, they will also be looking to incorporate this, these star ratings for um, uh, additional settings like the anticipated hospice compare that should be coming once um, hospice cap survey results are going to be available for public reporting along with those hospice item set data. So there are two STAR ratings that CMS has uh, released and that they're going to be providing information on on an ongoing basis, on a quarterly basis. The first one is the Quality of Patient Care STAR rating. And this STAR rating is based on OASIS assessments and Medicare claims data. This was first published on Home Health Compare in July of 2015 um, and, again, will be updated on a quarterly basis. The second star rating is going to be the patient survey star rating. And this one is going to be based on the um, home health CAPS or HH CAPS survey data. They are anticipating first publishing this star rating in January of 2016. And again, this information will be updated on a quarterly basis. The quality of patient care star rating is the one that we're going to focus on right now primarily because it's the one that has been released and people are most familiar with here. It summarizes each agency's performance 
on, an av on average across none of those 29 publicly reported quality measures that are already being reported on home health compare. It provides a general overview of the agency's performance and it includes the measures that are that apply to most of the patients, most people. It incorporates both process and outcome measures to really give a more well-rounded view of performance as well. Our ratings have a range of one to five stars, and really the intention is that most of the agencies are going to fall in the middle with three or three and a half stars. Those that have four or five stars those agencies essentially performed better than others, and those with one or two stars performed below the average of the other agencies. Since this is a comparison, it does not automatically mean that um, agencies that have a one or a two star rating, it does not mean there is poor care being provided. It simply is in comparison with other agencies, how do they rate, how do they um, Back up. So that's an important thing to understand. Obviously, when this is being uh, conveyed to the public, the general mindset is five is good, one is bad. And so, but that's just something for home health agencies as you're looking at this information to keep in mind. Again, this information is updated on a quarterly basis. Um, it doesn't follow the exact same time frame as um, home health compare results are being updated. Um, and we'll look at that in a moment. So I mentioned that there are nine quality measures that are included in the STAR rating. And these come from the 29 available publicly reported measures. Um, the, there are three process measures and six outcome measures. The three process measures look at if um, care was initiated in a timely manner, if um, the the home health agency provided patient and caregiver drug education on all medications, and its agency ensured patients received flu vaccine for the current season. The outcome measures look at whether or not the patient got better at walking or moving around, whether they got better at getting in and out of bed, better at bathing, if they were able to engage in activity with less pain, if they experienced less shortness of breath, and if they required uh, an acute care hospitalization. That's the one element right here that is coming from the claims data. All the others are going to come from the OASIS assessment. As far as eligibility and criteria, um, all Medicare certified home health agencies are um, can potentially receive a STAR rating, um, but there are some uh, criteria that they have to meet in order for a STAR rating to be calculated for them. They must have at least 20 complete quality episodes, and so those that have a paired start or resumption of care and end-of-care OASIS assessment. The episodes must have an end-of-care date that falls within the 12-month reporting period, regardless of whenever that care started. So again, the STAR ratings are going to be updated on a quarterly basis, but will um, be based on a full 12 months of data. We must have reported data for five out of those nine measures in order for a calculation, the STAR um, big calculation to be uh, performed. And the agency must be in operation for at least six months. Um, those are the basic criteria for an agency to be able to receive a STAR rating on Home Health Compare. As far as the methodology, this is really going to be an overview. I'm not going into a lot of the specific details. This information is included uh, in a little bit more detail, both in the um, well, on the um, Home Health Compare website. They talk about it a little bit more, as well as um, in the final rule. Agencies, essentially, the performance scores are ranked, and then they are assigned into deciles. And the deciles are assigned a rating from 0.5 to 5 at 0.5 increments, so 0.5, 1, 1.52, and so on, up to 5. Adjustments are made to that initial rating score if, um, if that score is not statistically significantly different from the national median. If the scores 
are statistically significantly different, um, then no, no adjustment is made. But if they are not statistically significantly different from the national median or midpoint, 50th percentile, then any ratings that were uh, below 2.5 would be increased by half of an increment. Any that were over 3 would be decreased by 0.5. And then those that were uh, at 2.5 or 3, those would have no adjustments made. The overall rating, the overall star rating, is an average of the adjusted ratings. And then that gets rounded to the nearest half star. So for each of the questions, each of the nine questions, performance scores are going to be ranked and then basically um, cut up into 10%, so into 10, those 10 groupings, the deciles. Um, and again, that initial rating will be assigned and then adjustments made and then the overall rating calculated from there. When we look at the preview report, we'll go into a little bit more, we'll, we'll run over this information a little bit easier, I think, when we're looking at a report to identify what details they're going to be providing to you, again, before this information is um, uh, made public on Home Health Compare. As far as timing and availability, I, I touched on this when we first started talking about the fact that the data that is going to be published in there, included in these star ratings does not correspond directly with the data that is going to be publicly, publicly reported on Home Health Compare. So this is just a, um, a table to kind of explain that. Um, in July, when the first um, quality of care star ratings were published, those star ratings were based on calendar year 2014 data. However, in July, on Home Health Compare, the publicly reported measures um, were for Q2 2014 to Q1 2015. Um, so it does provide uh, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of a cushion, I suppose. It's essentially a quarter behind as far as the data that is being presented. Um, you will get the preview reports at the same time that the data is being publicly reported on Home Health Compare. So you can see that in that third column, it talks about when you're going to see, what data you'll see in the star rating preview reports, and that aligns or matches with what you're going to see from the publicly reported measures on Home Health Compare. Again, star ratings are just um, roughly a, a quarter behind. Um, all that said, and I have a little asterisk there, the, the one question that comes from the claims data, that one is an additional three months older than OASIS data. Um, and that just an example is provided there that those star ratings that were published in July include OASIS data from 2014, but the claims data is October um, 2013 to September 2014. So a little bit more delayed just from the timing of when the data is made available to CMS. January 2016 is also started there, and that's when the patient survey star ratings um, are scheduled to be published on Home Health Compare. October, um, in October 2015 will be the, the next update, and that's when you'll see the next set of star ratings for those quality patient care, um, quality of patient care star ratings. Provider preview report. Um, this information is something that they want to make sure that hospice, home health agencies have an opportunity to review the data before it's all made public. Um, these preview reports, again, are provided about three and a half months before that information will be published on Home Health Compare. Um, home health agencies have an opportunity to request a review of their data if they can provide proof that the data is inaccurate or incomplete. Um, it really is not an opportunity for home health agencies to question it or, you know, I don't understand where my data came from, but you have to have proof that the data that CMS is basing this uh, star rating on is inaccurate or incomplete, that they're missing pieces of data that should have been, um, was available at the time but not incorporated into that star rating. 
Um, again, the preview reports, as we're going to see in a moment, really provide a lot of detail so that as you're looking through the information, you can get a better sense of where these calculations came from. They don't provide all of the calculations, certainly, but it is going to give you more visibility as to the different steps and how, um, how they got to the ultimate star ratings that are going to be provided on Home Health Compare. The preview report is really just a uh, two-page report, and this is just a sample here. Um, and it is going to be have a, so sort of the first page here really just is very high level, giving you that overall star rating. So for our fake home health agency here, it's three stars, um, and then gives you a very brief description of how those um, the, the ratings are calculated. Um, beyond that, um, in the report, you will find another table here that is the star rating scorecard, the, HA, the Home Health Compare star rating scorecard, which really breaks down a lot of detail in one table to help you understand how they get to that ultimate um, overall star rating, and in this case, it's three stars. At the top, rows 2 through 11, that's where you're going to find the decile scores for each measure. And you can see each of the measures is listed across each of the columns there. Um, so you can see each of the timely initiation of care, uh, education about medications, the flu shot, all of them across down to the, on the, on the end is the um, acute hospital admission, the one that comes from the claims data. So it'll give you the different scores for those death cell, um, um, rankings. These scores will change because the rankings are going to change each quarter based on the agency's performance. But again, it is going to provide you with that visibility as to if you um, weren't in a particular, or in this case, if we just look at the very first column, this organization, if we look at row 13, their decile ranking is 3.5. So their performance score of 94.6 falls into the uh, 3.5 decile ranking. It would provi that provides a little bit of uh, detail and information. They know they are on the bottom end of that decile, so closer to the 3.0, because the decile rankings there, or the, the scores for that decile are 94.5 to 95.9. So their score of 94.6 is on the bottom edge of that decile group. It can help you understand how far away they may have been or your organization would be from either um, jumping into the next decile or uh, sort of falling back into a lower decile group. Again, this does not indicate bad care or anything like that. It's simply a ranking of scores and uh, ranking of organizations based on their scores for each one of these measures. The next line here, row 12, is going to show your scores for each of those measures. And again, in order for this to, for the star ratings to be provided, your organization has to have had data for at least five of these. If there are, if there's one measure or more than one measure that doesn't have data, it would simply uh, not have those, those values here in each of these different columns. Um, Again, your score then will be compared with the scores of the deciles above, and that will give you your initial decile rating. As we mentioned, this is going to be um, adjusted. It may be adjusted based on the statistical significance of the differences between your score and the national median. So um, we talked about how these are all ranked according to performance, and then really it's, uh, the comparisons here are going to be made, and the ultimate star ratings are going to be made based on a comparison to the midpoint or that 50th percentile. Um, so essentially showing if you're in the top half of agencies as far as performance scores or in the bottom half. Below your score and your decile rating, it will show you your volume, so the number of cases, or N, that are included in this 
star rating. Below that, you will see what the midpoint is or the national median. That's in row 15. And again, those will be the, the scores um, for it, but break down as they look at all of the scores that come in and break those down um, to find that midpoint score. From there, they do statistical uh, testing to determine whether or not there is um, a statistically significant difference between your score and the, the national median. Now, one of the reasons that they are including the number of cases, the volume, is that that can have an impact on whether or not results are considered to be statistically significantly different. Um, so in rows 16 and 17, on 16, they're going to give you the results of that statistical test, your p-value, your probability value test, looking in, and providing you with that p-value. And then 17 is going to keep it real simple and just indicate if, your, if the results were statistically significant or not. I'm sorry, statistically significantly different from that national median or not. So you can see the different yeses and nos that are displayed for each of the different um, measures here. And again, each measure is tested individually. Then below that, you will see your adjusted um, rating for each of the individual measures. If the row 17 indicates a yes, then there is no adjustment. If the um, if the row 17 indicates no and the results were above uh, 3.0 or below 2.5, then there will be an adjustment. Again, if it's below 2.5, then it would be uh, rolled up by a half of a uh, rating. And if it was above 3.0, it, it would be um, rolled down by half a rating. And you can see that in the fourth measure over improved walking or moving around. Um, the initial decile rating was a 2.0. It was not statistically significantly different from the median. <clears throat> and so the adjusted rating for that measure has been bumped up to 2.5. Similarly, um, the third from the right had less pain moving around. The initial decile rating there was a 3.5. It was uh, not statistically significantly different. And unfortunately, my label is right over that. But um, you can see that the adjusted rating is, has been bumped down to a 3.0. Then they look at the, and the next row that you'll see, row 19, is going to give you that adjusted overall rating um, where they average uh, those scores. Um, then they are going to, if needed, they would round that number up to the nearest half decimal. Um, this one didn't need to be rated, but it's um, at 2.5. And then they provide that overall star rating, um, which would be 3.0 in this case, because it, it is uh, going to be uh, because of the adjustment that has been made. So there's a lot of detail here. Um, the primary things that you will be able to take a look at and be able to um, contact CMS if you have evidence that there, you should have had data for particular measures if they show up as blank in this report for your um, agency scores. Um, that certainly would be something to look at. If your scores are different from uh, for each of these measures than what you were anticipating from what was reported, on Home Health Compare previously, um, or actually during that same time frame as when you'll get the, the preview report. If those scores look different, um, that'll give you an opportunity to review this information and just be prepared for what that star rating is going to be um, once it is posted on Home Health Compare the following quarter. Once they are posted, they are um, posted, and it's publicly reported there. So there's not an opportunity to go back and adjust them after that point. But again, having the time here, a um, little bit of time from when the individual measures are posted on Home Health Compare um, gives you that opportunity just to 
um, make sure that the data that Home Health Compare is going to be providing for those star ratings are going to be accurate. So much of this information really was intended to provide um, uh, really a high level view of what these star ratings are, what you can anticipate, and what you can do with them. The intention, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, these are intended for um, the public to be able to look at and be able to easily consume, understand that if you have an organization with an overall star rating of 4.5 compared to 3 or compared to 2, it gives them a sense of how that agency, their overall performance compares with others in other home health agencies. Um, internally, if you're using this information, it can also provide you with that understanding of how you compare. Um, while it's, again, not an indication of good care versus bad care per se, but really is uh, comparing results across all agencies, ranking them. Um, so there, regardless of where you fall within these star ratings, you may find opportunities that you can look at your performance scores and although you may be in line with what uh, the other agencies, how they are performing in a particular area, it may give you um, an opportunity or an understanding that there may be things that you want to do to improve certain areas. If you find that you felt your scores were pretty good, but they end up being in the bottom half of um, how you compare with the other agencies, that also can provide you with some information, some data to help drive performance improvement opportunities and really um, focus in on things that you may need to target to help improve scores, your OASIS assessment scores around um, these particular nine measures. Again, all 29 measures are actually going to be still publicly reported. This star rating is really just um, CMS's way of being able to provide an easy to digest quick glance as to overall ratings for each home health agency on Home Health Compare. With that, I want to take a moment um, and just look at some of the questions that have come in and see if we can answer them. And if there are additional questions, if you haven't enter, answered any but you do have them, please do uh, go ahead and enter them into that questions box within, um, within your GoToMeeting. Um, what can agencies do regarding negative patient comments that aren't really negative? For example, one negative comment stated, no Facebook. Um, for that, um, let me go back. I'm going to come back to, let me jump back. I want to look at the... Um, individual measures so we can look at those. Um, because these star ratings, again, are going to be based on the actual measures, the data from these individual measures. So as far as um, comments, um, that information is going to be uh, not, is not necessarily going to be incorporated here as you're looking at the measures that are going to be um, used to calculate that star rating. Um, if I've misunderstood your question or there's more to it, please uh, go ahead and submit another question and we will take a look at that. Another question that has come in is, uh, do you know if this misalignment of um, publicly reported data versus STARS is the same across all STARS or just the home health STARS? Um, my understanding is the time frame is going to be about the same. Um, but the focus here has definitely been on looking at the HH CAPS star ratings, and it really has to do with providing uh, the providers an opportunity to review that data before it, the star ratings are made public. So because the data is not publicly reported until a specific quarter, at that point, that's when you would be able to see the preview reports to be able to get an understanding of where that data is coming from.
Um, can you clarify how and when do we get the preview reports? My understanding is that the preview reports are provided on the Keys ASAP uh, reporting system um, and CASPER reporting system where um, other reports are made available to the home health agencies. Um, the timing of that, I, um, I honestly am not sure if an email is sent out or how that notification is made. Um, it is all still so new where the, the first posting of the star ratings was in July. But, and they've given sort of a generalized roughly three and a half months before they're posted is when you would get that um, uh, preview report. And again, it should be available on that, I believe, the CASPER reporting system. What website can you, re can you view the star rating report? So on Home Health Compare is where you will be able to see the uh, star ratings themselves. As far as the um, preview reports, though, as we just mentioned, that would be through their individual reports that would be uh, available to you to download through the CASPER system. Um, will the five-star rating scores be used when calculating financial penalties in future fiscal years? Um, this hasn't been mentioned per se that they're going to be using this. The intention really is to be able to provide a way for consumers, um, the, the public, to be able to get a sense of performance, overall performance for an individual agency and how they compare across um, other agencies on Home Health Compare. Um, that really it has been the focus and the intention of these actual star ratings. So there really hasn't been um, a focus or a, a target around the um, financial, on calculating financial penalties. Honestly, though, that does not mean that that won't change over time. Um, CMS has that uh, ability to modify how they do things over the years through the, and obviously that would be, uh, that information would be conveyed during the, um, or not during, through the uh, final rule and um, the proposed rule when that gets published each year. What is the quickest way to get to this data you are showing us? Um, if the data is regarding that preview report, that information again will be on the CASPER report and um, soon you should be expecting the preview report um, for the next quarter. So October is when we will be, we, CMS will be um, publishing star ratings based on data from April 2014 to March 2015. Um, and that data um, will be on Home Health Compare. Um, uh, you, will, you should have already received a preview report for that information that's going to be published in October. As far as the January 2016 publishing, um, that we would expect the um, preview report for the quality of patient care star rating to be available in around October. It may not be the exact date that the data is reported publicly on Home Health Compare, but again, they've provided that rough three and a half months before it gets posted on Home Health Compare that that data would be available. How does a star rating of 3.0 get calculated when the average rating or adjusted rating is 2.5? Um, that has to do with the methodology of whoops, the other way. The methodology um, as far as the rounding and how they come up, um, they determine if it needs to be rounded. Again, this is the sample provider report that CMS shared, um, and so uh, um, it's not something that we or I have calculated to put in those numbers, um, but based on the methodology is that they would be averaging those adjusted ratings and then to come up with an overall rating and then if need be, it would be rounded up or down to the nearest half star. Um, are there any best practices available to improve these processes and outcome measures other than OASIS trainings, et cetera? Um, the best practices really, 
there haven't been anything published about these specific nine measures and what needs to happen to improve your star rating. Um, again, it's really very new for uh, new information that's being put out there. Um, so best practices haven't necessarily been identified as to how to improve your overall star rating. It really does um, lead to looking at how you are performing with these nine measures. Um, and there are um, thinking through how those scores come, where you get those scores from, and if there are individual um, measures that you find that you are that are driving the overall star performance one way or the other that you want to take a look at, um, that really gives you an opportunity to dig down into your processes around that particular measure to see if there are ways that you might be able to improve scores. Um, so if we, again, go back to these, if you find that there are, um, your, your comparative scores are lower for some of the PT related or PT and OT therapy in general related um, OASIS questions, number four, five, and six here, um, that can indicate that there may be a need for more focus around what is happening around the PT, what is the focus of therapy, are these problems that are, are being addressed, um, are there different ways that you can approach transfer training or ADL training or just general ambulation or gait training. So things like that can definitely have an impact, but as far as specific uh, best practices as to how to improve your overall star rating, really it's going to be a matter of digging into these nine specific measures, flagging them as you look at your scores each month, each quarter, so that you can get a better sense of how you're performing. If you are focusing up from a performance improvement standpoint, different projects you might be working on, um, are those results coming through? It's not going to be immediate, and so that is an important thing. Um, I always just like to remind folks as they start to jump into any kind of a quality improvement project or performance improvement project, just by changing some processes this month, you're not necessarily going to see a dramatic increase in scores next month. There's time associated with getting these practices into place and really making sure that um, you're able to sustain these changes in practice or process that will end up with, uh, ultimately end up with results that are more favorable and hopefully improved scores, and in particular, hoping that they are improved as compared with your other organizations that are in other uh, home health agencies that are included in this comparison. If your performance score improves but everyone else's scores improve as well, your ranking may still stay the same. Um, but again, it's, it really does provide you with that opportunity to focus your efforts on these nine specific measures when it comes to the overall star ratings in general. Um, how important are patient surveys pertaining to our score? In this, for this quality of patient care rating, they have no impact whatsoever. Um, the quality of patient care star rating is solely based on these nine measures, eight of which come from the OASIS assessment, one of which is from claims data. The next star rating that will be added to Home Health Compare is going to be solely based on those satisfaction scores. So those survey scores are going to have an impact um, once you start in, when we see the star ratings in January 2016. Um, knowing um, it's going to be focused on the publicly reported measures um, that are being driven from HHCAP. And so it allows you that opportunity to start to look at how are your satisfaction scores now and try to make um, address any performance issues that you may be aware of or uh, that may be having, you're anticipating may have an impact on your overall patient satisfaction or patient survey star rating. Um, so there was a, a question to go over the calculations one more time, and I will be happy to go there. Um, as far as the just general 
uh, methodology again, ranking each question for each performance uh, measure, ranking each agency based on scores, just flat out performance scores, uh, highest to lowest, and then breaking that full list down into uh, 10 groups. And each of them, each of those groups or decile is going to be assigned a ranking, a rating from 0.5 to 5 and at 0.5 increments. Um, then based on the performance score for each measure compared with the national median for each measure, if the scores are statistically significantly different, there won't be any adjustment. If they are not statistically significantly different um, for whatever reason, meaning the scores themselves are very close, or um, like I mentioned, volume can have an impact on whether or not something is statistically significant. Um, so if they are not statistically significantly different, then there is the adjustment being made in that initial rating. Um, either if it's on the low side, below 2.5, they'll increase it by a half increment. If it's above 3.0, that adjusted rating will be decreased by half an increment. And if it's in the middle, there won't be any adjustment. From the adjusted ratings, they will average those. And that will be um, that will be what we looked at on the the report. That would be your um, your average adjusted rating score. Then they adjust that by rounding it um, up or down to the nearest half increment, and that is the intention of providing that overall um, the overall score, the overall rating or stars that you would be able to see in that star rating. Uh, that gets published on Home Health Compare. Is this just for Medicare claims or for uh, Medicaid and all insurances? Um, the criteria, as we looked at here from eligibility, all Medicare certified home health agencies are eligible to receive a star rating. So. Um, if you're a Medicare certified home health agency, you're going to be put into the bucket of those organizations that could um, uh, receive a star rating and have that published on Home Health Compare. Um, the, uh, the, my understanding is that the data that they're going to be showing is going to be consistent, or that they're calculating from, is going to be consistent with the data that's being publicly reported on Home Health Compare. So um, that same criteria is going to be in place um, as what they decide that goes on to Home Health Compare for each of the 29 publicly reported measures. That same criteria will be used um, to determine these star ratings, again, keeping that consistent on the website and the Home Health Compare website as to how the data is being uh, displayed and, and made available. Um, so uh, there's another question that just came in. Does the patient survey data make up 50% of the home health scores? Um, again, two totally different, um, two totally different star ratings. So you have the star rating here that's based on OASIS and um, the one Medicare claims data measure, and then starting in in uh, January 2016, there will be a second star rating. So there will be two different star ratings. And the second one is going to be based solely on the HH cap. So it's not as if those two star ratings are going to be combined. It's going to be able to show those individual ones separately. Um, I'm just trying to look through the questions that have come in. And I, I believe we have, I, we're a little bit short on our one hour time frame here, but I believe we've answered them. If we, um, if I have missed any, I'm going to go through them and I will uh, be able to get back in touch with you. But um, there were a lot of questions that were very similar, um, and so I was trying to combine them and answer them all together. Um, let me. 
just as we are wrapping up here, I want to um, just highlight at the very end here. And I'm sorry for jumping through all of this. Um, I appreciate you joining us today. And at home at Healthcare First, we really are focused on keeping not only our clients but the industry as a whole as up to date as possible with any updates that are happening in regulatory or compliance, um, both around home health and hospice. And so, for if you're trying to stay up to that in any um, and want to know what the latest regulatory news and updates are, please visit our blog at www.healthcarefirst.com slash blog, and uh, you will be able to see updates that are posted from our reg compliance and regulatory folks on an ongoing basis. With that, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Liz, for that great information, and thanks to all of you for attending as well. As you log out of this webinar, you will see a survey pop up asking how we did. We encourage you to fill this survey out as your feedback. Opinions and comments are very valuable in planning our future webinars. In addition, if you can let us know if you're interested in having a representative contact you about additional products and services we have developed exclusively for home health and hospice. We thank you for joining us today, and we hope you will join us again in the future for more webinars. Have a great afternoon. <laughs>